Welcome back students. This is going to be a fairly short video covering this section. Um, this is not a history of chemistry course, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going over the historical developments in our uh, understanding of current chemical principles and theories and so forth. But there are a few things that I would like to share with you that uh, that are fairly important in our understanding of the structure of an atom. And we often call them great experiments in physics and chemistry. When we're talking about subatomic, that means smaller than the atom particles or the particles that make up the atom, we are more properly in the field of uh, particle physics. But because it is fundamental to our understanding of the atom, and the atom is and the atom is the basic building block of matter, and chemistry is the study of matter and the changes that it undergoes, it's, uh, it's pretty good to understand where we get our concept of the atom from. And to, it's also helpful to recognize that this is a fairly recent, recent as in the last 120, 125 years, series of discoveries that helped us to elucidate the, the structure of an atom. Now I will say a lot of this is just repeating history, telling you a story, and I think you might be better served just to read about this because it's a fairly short read in your in your e-text. So what we're going to do is I'm going to cover this first section here, section A, and just make a few quick notes so that you have them in your in your workbook. But when we get down to the three great discoveries that I want to cover, I'm just going to mention the names of the researchers, the names of their experiments, and I will ask you to read about them in the OpenStax textbook. Okay? So let's get started up here at the top. A lot of it starts in the late 1800s and early 1900s. The atom was already known. There was already, there was already a lot of research going on into electromagnetic radiation. So we start out with Röntgen in uh, 1895 who discovers X-rays, which is a type of uh, very highly energetic electromagnetic radiation. The next year, Becquerel discovers two new classes of radiation, which he calls alpha and beta. Marie Curie, uh, in that, uh, starting in that year and in the next uh, 10 to 15 years, does research on radiation and radioactive materials. And her re through her research, she coins this new term called radioactivity, and she discovers two new elements. And then we get uh, Rutherford, who also did an extensive study into radioactivity, and he discovered a third type of radiation, which he called gamma. So alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. There are symbols that you should probably be familiar with. There's the Greek letter alpha. These are lowercase alpha. This is the Greek letter beta. Looks like a, a capital B with a swoopy beginning. And gamma, which is kind of like a Y almost an italic Y. So those are the symbols for those types of radiation. These first two are particulate. They are particles. So they have mass and so forth. Gamma radiation is not a particle. Like X-ray radiation, gamma radiation is a type of electromagnetic radiation. So it's EM radiation. Okay, now when you get on to Chem 152, that's the second semester of general chemistry, we're going to have a chapter on nuclear chemistry, and you'll be covering these much more at that point. However, I think that's enough for now just to kind of set the stage for the three great experiments in uh, chemistry or physics, particle physics, that led to our understanding of the structure of an atom. So the discovery of the electron charge to mass ratio was Thomson, T-H-O-M, no P, S-O-N. And his discovery was achieved by using the cathode ray tube. So the cathode ray tube experiment by Thomson. I will point out that another word for a beta particle is a cathode ray, 
And we also think of them, and we can think of them now as electrons. Okay. I'm not going to fill in the gap here, but I want you to just read that, and you can take some notes as you read that. This is going to be in section 2.2 of your OpenStax e-text. This is the OpenStax atoms first. Okay, and so you can you can read about Thomson J.J. Thomson's discovery of the electron's charge to mass ratio. Now Thomson didn't discover the charge. He didn't determine the mass of the electron, but he was able to discover the ratio between them. Following shortly after that, and building on his work, the actual discovery of the charge and the mass of the electron was done by Robert Millikan, M-I-L-L-I-K-A-N. And he used what's known as the oil drop experiment. And you can read about that again in section 2.2 of your OpenStax text and make whatever notes you wish. Maybe even make a, a drawing or a sketch of the experiment that he used. And then this leads to the discovery of the nucleus by Rutherford. Using what is known as the gold foil experiment. So again, I'm not going to go into the details of how these experiments were set up. I'm going to ask you to read that. So you're going to have a reading assignment so that you can fill in notes and maybe even sketches of these experimental setups. And you will find that in section 2.2 of your OpenStax e-text, your OpenStax Atoms First e-text. It will probably take you less than 15 minutes to read, maybe only about 10 minutes to read that section and make some notes in there. Okay, and that's how we're going to cover this section. I just want you to know where we got our ideas from about the structure of the atom. But that being said, our understanding of the atom does not rely on these experiments anymore. The structure of the atom, the charge and mass of, of an electron, the existence of the nucleus, the, the uh, presence of protons and neutrons, those do not rely on these 100-year-old, 120-year-old experiments. They have been confirmed and developed, and we know far more about the structure of an atom now than these experiments were able to elucidate for us. And our understanding of subatomic particles now has been greatly enhanced by quantum theory. But that being said, we are still going to deal with the particulate model, that is, the model of thinking that considers subatomic particles as if they were particles, rather than wave functions uh, as they're considered in quantum theory. And it's very helpful to talk about individual protons and individual electrons and so forth, when doing a lot of our chemistry. It's a very useful model, but I just want to make sure that you know that our understanding of these concepts has grown by leaps and bounds, and especially with the quantum theory models, we have added so much more to our understanding of what the atom is and, and how it can be modeled. Okay, so these are considered the great experiments, some of the great experiments that first gave us our, our our true insights into the particulate model of uh, subatomic structure.